In today's video, I actually want to talk about 2D sonar. So the first thing I wanted to talk about with 2D sonar, because a lot of people have questions on just what what is 2D sonar, how do I make it the most effective on my specific unit that I'm using. Whether you're using a Garmin, a Humminbird, Lowrance, Raymarine, doesn't really matter. 2D sonar is 2D sonar. Basically, for those of you that are older models, uh, you will have two frequencies. You'll have an 83 kilohertz frequency and a 200 kilohertz frequency. Now the 83 kilohertz frequency is a wide cone angle. It's what's considered the wide cone angle. There's a school of bait fish right there. Your 200 kilohertz is your narrow cone angle. I suggest you just pick one frequency, unless you can run a dual beam frequency. Some sonar units have that of the older models. Pick one and get used to seeing what you're supposed to be seeing. I got school of bait fish. I got a brush. These are, looks like rocks or brush pile. There's some fish stacked above it. Um, and then there's some other bait fish mixed in. The 200 kilohertz sonar is one third the width of the bottom. So I'm, let's say I'm in nine feet of water right here. If I'm running 200 kilohertz, I'm only seeing three feet wide of a cone angle. That's the three feet wide in diameter. If I'm running 83 kilohertz, I'm seeing my full nine feet wide in diameter. Typically, most people run 83 kilohertz in shallow water because what you're trying to do is see as much of the bottom as possible. And your screen, because it's only 10 feet deep or 12 feet deep or less, it doesn't have to cram in as much data. Versus if you're in 30 feet of water, if you try to run 83 kilohertz, there's a lot more data. There's a lot more water column that you're trying to see and your screen's trying to cram it all into your five, seven, nine inch screen, whatever you got. So that's why a lot of people in deeper water, they run 200 kilohertz. Now, if you have a newer unit like this one, you can run what is called chirp. So if I go to my menu, if I go to my beam width, and these are gonna be different options in different sonar units, but you see I have it on chirp and chirp is a 19 degree cone right now. But with the Garmin's, you can adjust up and down in your degree, but as you go up in, in degree, your smaller, I'm sorry, your smaller cone angle, the higher the frequency. So 230 kilohertz, 16 degree cone angle. That's a very narrow, narrow cone angle. It's only 16 degrees. But if I go down here to 24 kilohertz, or 24 degrees, it's 145 degree, 45 kilohertz. It's a smaller kilohertz number, wider cone angle, okay? So let me just reinstate that because I'll probably mess that up a little bit for you. The lower the kilohertz number, the wider the cone angle. The higher the kilohertz, the narrower the cone angle. If you have a system that can run chirp, just put it on chirp. What this does is it uses all these frequencies. It sends out the frequencies at the same exact time. It uses multi-frequency technology, sends the frequencies out at the exact same time and tries to give you the clearest image possible, okay? now. Cool thing on the garments here, I don't know if you can see this. Right here on my, what's this is called A-scope. Uh, Humminbird calls it RTS or real-time sonar. This is called the amplitude meter. Right on the bottom it says 8.7 feet. Now it's jumping because I'm, I'm going into shallower water here. There's actually, a, I just went over a brush pile right here. There's a brush pile, there's a ton of fish on top of it. Bait fish, there's probably some crappie mixed in. But this tells me how wide my cone angle is on these garments, which is pretty cool. So right now I'm viewing 4.9 feet of the bottom with my 2D sonar. So now that we've gone through kind of cone angles and frequencies, and I hope you got a decent understanding of that. The higher the frequency, the narrower the cone angle. The lower the frequency, the wider the cone angle, the more you're gonna see of the bottom. We're gonna go into, uh, let's go into pallets because people get a little confused of what they should be using. Appearance, color scheme. Now, uh, this is your pretty typical Garmin unit setup. This blue pattern, it's a blue background. I want you to pick something that you are used to. Um, this yellow setup for a lot of Humminbird units, a lot of older Humminbird units run this yellow setup. I like the maroon. And what this does, 
On your Humminbird units, it will show you a, a palette at the top, kind of showing what is hard bottom and what is soft bottom. This dark red, that is hard bottom return. That's my sand, my gravel. Um, we're gonna actually go out a little bit deeper here and you're gonna see this hard red transition to more of this flaky stuff where it's, there's probably a walleye or something right there on the bottom, maybe a bass. You're gonna see a transition from this hard bottom return to a softer bottom return. Now that hard return means it's, it's probably a bigger object or a bigger fish. If you uh, go over a brush pile or a rock pile, those are gonna be hard returns. Those are gonna be dark red, okay? As you can see, there's some smaller bait fish up, for, up top. You have to just understand which palette you're choosing to know what is the hard and soft return. Because as we get out to the softer bottom here, it's gonna drop pretty quick. Here, we'll get out to some softer bottom. Now we're starting to see a little bit of fleck or uh, specks kind of in the maroon, the maroon area here. And this is going to be our softer bottom. This is can be difficult to see on 2D sonar. It's much easier to see on down imaging or side imaging. But let's actually go into uh, our gain. This is our, our gain here. We toned down our gain just a bit. Start making that red bottom a little less. Notice when I'm doing that, there's fish on the bottom. You can see these fish. Let's see if I can zoom in on some of these fish. See these, there's fish on the bottom when I touch down that gain. I had the gain up a little too high. Um, I have it right now at about 67, I think. Yeah, 67%. Play with your gain. Auto medium put it at like 80 some. I want this, even auto low. So we'll go 66. Seem to give the best uh, picture showing where there's fish on the bottom. Now see how it's pixelated down here? This is all my soft bottom. As I get back up onto this ledge, you're gonna notice it becomes a hard bottom again and it's just gonna be bright red all the way through. But there are, there's definitely fish right on the bottom. Let's we'll zoom back out. See as I'm zooming here, my total zoom is zero to 30 feet. And the reason I always set my depth to 30 feet on 2D sonar and on down imaging is because, well, two reasons. The main reason you want to uh, shrink your screen is because of the pixels that it's gonna designate to a square uh, inch or area of water. Let me explain something. Let's say this is your, uh, this is your crappie for whatever reason, it's shaped like this. When the transducer sends a signal down, it's gonna hit part of that fish. And the slower you go over it, the more it's gonna ping off this fish, which is why you see all these elongated lines as I'm not really moving that fast. If you were to go two miles an hour, it might only hit this fish three or four times. That's why you see these sharp arcs because normally a fish is more shaped like this. So it's gonna ping off the tail of it, the middle and the head, and it's gonna give you this arc shape. So if you're fishing for crappie like we are today, you're going to wanna shrink that screen or actually zoom in. So you're gonna set your auto depth from zero to 30. Now I have it set on auto because it's only 20 feet deep. So the fish are gonna show up just fine. But for those of you guys that fish in a little bit deeper water, 40, 50 feet, Set your depth to 30 for two reasons. One, you're gonna be able to see the fish better. It's gonna give more pixels to smaller fish. You're gonna see the bait fish, you're gonna see the crappie really well. And two, it's not really ethical to fish for crappie deeper than 30 feet. Um, if, you, if you catch them that deep, odds are pretty good. The mortality rate is really high uh, because their air bladders expand as you move them through the wa water column deeper than 30 feet. And you can do that by uh, setting your depth here. Range, here we go. Range, you'd set it 30 feet, lock it in at 30 feet. A lot of you, that's probably what you'll do. If you're in shallow water, I would go probably five feet deeper than what you're fishing in. So let's say I'm in 15 feet of water here. I'm gonna probably put it at about 20 feet. There's fish right there stacked up on the bottom see these arcs if you're not seeing perfect arcs and i had this with my hummingbird you got to make sure your transducer is level to the boat as it sits in the water that's going to give you the best image okay if your transducer if this is the back of the boat your transducer is sticking out this way if your transducer is tilted up or tilted down it's not going to give you the best image these are the arcs that you want okay and 
a lot of the problem I, I see is the installation isn't correct on the transducer when I when I read comments about my image doesn't quite look like yours make sure that transducer is level I had this happen early on when I bought this boat my transducer wasn't level the the image was a little weird so make sure that transducer is level so we've gone through frequency we've gone through gain or I guess your scent this would be called your sensitivity for some of you uh, on your hummingbird sensitivity be like one through ten here it's a percentage on your garments uh, let's talk about fish symbols so some people talk about fish ID uh, especially on the hummingbird units Garmin has this fish ID let's just turn it on for now S see what it sees see what it's showing I gotta adjust my depth here let's just set it to auto for now Here's the problem with the fish ID. Notice you see all these marks on my A-scope. We're gonna get into shallow water so it'll it'll actually show up a little bit better. You, there's a bunch of little marks showing up on my A-scope right now. And what this, this unit is trying to do with fish ID or these symbols, it's trying to interpret what it's seeing in the water column and just give you an image. Now here's the problem with this. As we get into shallow water here, Oftentimes, especially with crappie fishing, these crappie will be schooled up tight. So this one symbol of a fish or this fish ID might be five crappie schooled together, but your machine, whether it's your Garmin, your Hummingbird, or Lowrance, it interpreted marks that I see normally on this sonar and just gave you a, a weird ID like this, okay? Also, it looks like it's breaking for some reason. And it's as it's trying to interpret the image. Oh, I got into shallow water there. As it's trying to interpret the image, you can see there's breaks in my so sonar there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut this off. And, oh no, let's leave that on, off. I'm gonna show you, it shouldn't be breaking. See how the images are now clear? It's forcing, like this is a school of bait fish right, right on the edge of the weeds here. And normally it would probably show you an image of one or two of those fish IDs right there, but it wouldn't show you all these little bait fish. So you're forcing your unit to interpret everything for you, which honestly I'm not really a fan of. You should really get used to seeing your 2D sonar as it is. So if you, I guess if you wanna use it, you can. I personally wouldn't recommend it get used to seeing 2D sonar as it's meant to be. And what this does is your, your transducers in the bottom, top right of the screen here, it's sending the pings down. And when it hits a fish, if this is the fish, here's the, the, here's the head of the fish, here's the tail. It's gonna send these pings down and it's gonna go back to your transducer. And as we go over the top of the fish, it pings over the fish and creates these arcs. Now, if I'm, if I'm sitting still, what happens is that transducer sends the ping Let's say it hits the head of the fish and then the, the dorsal fin, but we're not moving anymore, so it just keeps hitting the dorsal fin. So these lines become elongated. If we can get over some fish, I can kind of show you. I might have to go to, yeah, go to my waypoints here. All right, we're gonna drift over some brush piles, I think, right here. I hope. Get you a good image of what this there it is, yep. So let's throw it in reverse. I'm gonna show you something here. All right, I threw it in reverse because I wanna sit right over the top of this brush pile. Notice how these lines are all of a sudden becoming elongated because we're not moving very fast, okay? The faster you move, the sharper these arch will be, but notice how my lines went from sharp arcs to very long. We're gonna drift right back over this brush pile right here. These lines are super long because if this is the fish, that transducer is just pinging back and forth because we're not moving over the top of the fish. So that's why they're, they're elongated like that. There's another question I always have. There is a zoom function. If you want to do a split zoom, typically uh, walleye guys use something like this. So you can zoom in to kind of the bottom. You know, the bottom six, seven feet, it'll be a zoom function on the left. Your hummingbirds have this function. It won't be a touch screen, but you can you can do kind of the same thing. So I can zoom into kind of this brush pile we're drifting over the top of. 
scroll speed, there it is, scroll speed. On your Hummingbirds, it's pretty much one through 10. Your Lowrance, I think, is one through 10 as well. Same thing with these Garmin's. I have it on default as five. Now, I did a video with my Hummingbird uh, with down imaging and side imaging on scroll speed. Scroll speed is the speed at which this data will populate into your system. A lot of these Garmin's and the Hummingbird websites, at least on the Hummingbird website I know, they tell you to run your scroll speed one mile or one notch faster than what you're trolling. So I'm trolling about, I typically idle about two and a half to three miles an hour. Is if I'm going straight forward and I'm looking for fish. This, this is about my idle speed, two and a half, three miles an hour. So typically I set about four to five. If let's say you're vertically jigging, I know a lot of guys, they like to crank it all the way up to 10. See how that data is really cranking through there? Because as you're vertically jigging, you wanna see your jigging presentation. If you have your transducer on your trolling motor, this would probably be a good speed to running at if you're just ripping a jig, maybe a lipless crankbait, jig and wrap, something like that. And you're really trying to see these sharp breaks and these arcs and as these fish come up and, and strike it. But if you're just going around finding fish, set it at default, 50%, five, whatever it is, right in the middle. Again, get used to the settings. Don't start changing a bunch of settings as you're going about your day. Get used to seeing what fish look like with a specific set of settings. Um, I've had people ask, when should I use 200 kilohertz or 83 kilohertz or whatever frequency, when should I change it? Don't change anything in terms of frequency or scroll speed until you get comfortable seeing what that scroll speed and what that frequency is showing you currently. The only things I would be changing is your gain or your sensitivity. And if you have a contrast button, I'm not sure if there's contrast here or not. Oh, I guess it'd be my color gain and my TVG. So uh, here, here's my interference. I run low interference. Typically isn't a problem. Uh, unless I'm fishing a river system with a lot of silt, then I might crank that up. My color gain is at uh, default. Now what color gain is, if we zoom in on the bottom, Notice how it starts shading everything way in. I typically run this high on my live scope unit, um, but for the most part, default works the best. Uh, when you're starting to see, like see there's, there's either rocks or there's fish right on this break. Right now I got it set on medium. Typically, I know with the live scope guys, if you're in shallow water, you wanna either set it to off or low. If you're in deeper water, let's say deeper than 15 feet, then you might want to set it to medium or high. Uh, because we're in the fall, typically the crappie that we're finding are in like 15 to 25, maybe 30 feet of water. So I'm gonna leave it on medium for now. Uh, there's also a, a bottom limit. We're gonna set that on auto. That's that's for you uh, offshore fishermen, I think. That's a pretty big, pretty big limit there. Um, but yeah, those are kind of the settings people, I know people wanted me to go through the settings that I use for my 2D sonar. Those are my settings that I use uh, that I, I, I don't use 2D sonar a ton, but when I do use it, those are my settings. So hopefully this helps, this video helps uh, for you to kind of tweak everything to where you're finding fish and you're seeing fish and you kind of know, okay, this is what I'm looking at. Let's go back over a brush pile here. And then we'll screenshot a few things for you. And here we're coming over a little bit of a brush pile. It's a kind of a tiny one. But there's some fish right, there's actually a, that might be a couple rocks. There's some fish stacked right above it. I'll screenshot that for you, that's a good example. And there's some bait fish up there in the top right corner. Well, so that is what your screen should be looking at with 2D sonar. If you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below. This is kind of like a crash course. I'm just out in the water and I, I've been going through my comment section on my phone and there was a lot of comments about how to use and how to set up all my settings on my 2D sonar. I'm gonna be doing my down imaging and my side imaging videos next. Um, I know a lot of you getting into this fall season, maybe you just bought a fish finder. 
I'm trying to dial it in. So hopefully these videos help. I'm gonna break down and kind of splice in what I think is super important. And I might go back and highlight certain things, but appreciate you watching. You got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. If you're in the market for a new fish finder, I have a few videos kind of breaking down different price points. Otherwise you can just send me a message on Facebook or Instagram. What would be the best bang for your buck to fit your budget? So appreciate you watching. And uh, I'm actually gonna go start filming the down imaging video right now. We'll see ya.